Korean economy. Your Excellency, President Mohamedou Buhari, I also call him a father as well. Your Excellency, the President-elect, Paul Ahmed Tinumbu, Your Excellency, the Vice President-elect, but their brother, Excellency Chetima. Your Excellency, President Uhuru Kenyatta, he and I have known each other forever from our President of the Republic of Kenya, the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, for their brother, Boss Mustafa, and thank you for all you did to get me here. I finished the annual meetings of the African Development Bank, Mr. President, yesterday at about midnight, and I had to get on the flight to be here this morning. That's why I came in late here. Thank you very much, uh, Secretary. Excellencies, Governors, Your Eminence, Your Royal Highnesses, Distinguished Ladies and gentlemen, friends of Nigeria, beloved Nigerians. I wish to start by thanking you, Mr. President, for inviting me to the ceremonies for the swearing in of the incoming president, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinumbu. I would like to congratulate you, Mr. President, for this achievement of the seventh democratic transition of our beloved country. I would like to congratulate the incoming president and also the incoming vice president. I wish to thank the secretary of the government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, the chairman and members of the transition, presidential transition council for inviting me to speak at this inaugural, inauguration lecture for the incoming president of Nigeria. It is such a great honor to share my views and perspectives after the wonderful speech that has been given my my very dear friend and brother, His Excellency President Uhuru Kenyatta, as our nation gets ready to have a passing of the baton between His Excellency President Mohamed Buhari and the incoming President, His Excellency Ashiwaju Ahmed Bola Tinumbu. It is your turn. <laughs> I wish to congratulate you, Mr. President, for your stewardship against difficulties of our nation for the past eight years. And thank you most sincerely, Mr. President, for your support for me as President of the African Development Bank. People say great things about what, by God's grace, we've been able to achieve. But unless I was sent on a mission and supported on that mission, it would not have been possible. I'd like to thank you, Mr. President, because without your support in 2015, and you're standing beside me and behind me in the rough times of 2020, I will not be president of the African Development Bank. <laughs> Mr. President, I was brought up as a kid to always go back to their elders and thank them. And we always say that the person who sent you on an errand is the person you go back to to thank and give the report back to. And so I'll just say two things as I thank you because I will not have another opportunity to thank you. The African Development Bank, Mr. President, was ranked this year as the most transparent financial institution in the world. And last year, Your Excellency, Mr. President, the African Development Bank was ranked as the best multilateral financial institution in the world. And so as you take leave as President, please accept my deepest gratitude, because without your support, I wouldn't have been there. And I want to thank you so much that you can take pride in these achievements as you go. And my dear brother, Bishop Kuka, was talking about Nigerian. I am proudly Nigerian. I will live as a Nigerian. I'll die as a Nigerian. And I'll ask God for permission on Resurrection Day, if I might just hold a green, white, green flag in my hand, and that would be great. I would like to congratulate the incoming president, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinumbu, GCFR, who will take over the mantle of leadership from Nigeria, from you. I'm delighted that my very dear friend, President Uhuru Kenyatta, the former president of Kenya, was invited to deliver the inauguration lecture. He is a great leader, not only in Kenya, 
a great leader for Africa. And I'm sure you must be wondering, there are actually two Kenyans that are actually here on this panel. Well, I lived in Kenya for many, many years, 10 years in Kenya. And I remember one day, President Goodluck Jonathan took me on a mission to Kenya, and we went to see President Uru Kenyatta. And as the two presidents were introducing members of their delegations, President Jonathan said to President Uru Kenyatta, here is Dr. Adeshina, Minister of Agriculture, to which President Kenyatta responded, yes, Adeshina is the Kenyan on loan to Nigeria. We all laughed. Thank you, Mr. President Kenyatta, for what an incredibly powerful speech you gave us to us today. Very, very insightful. Your Excellencies, the election of a new president always elicits hope. Nigeria will be looking to you as President Chinumbu and Vice President Shetima on your first day in office with hope. Hope that you will assure security, peace, and stability. Hope that you will heal and unite a fractious nation. Hope that you will rise above party lines and forge a compelling force to move the nation forward with inclusiveness, fairness, equity, and justice. Hope that you will dramatically improve the economy, which is what I'm going to talk about today. And hope that you will spark a new wave of prosperity. And hope must be brought to the present, as hope defied makes the heart grow weary. Your Excellencies, the starting point must be macroeconomic and fiscal stability. Unless the economy is revived and the fiscal challenges addressed boldly, the resources to develop will not be there. No bird can fly if its wings are tied. Nigeria currently faces huge fiscal deficits, estimated at 6% of the GDP. This has been due to several challenges, including low receipts to dwindling revenues from export of crude oil, vandalism of pipelines, and illegal bunkering of crude oil. According to Nigeria's Debt Management Office, Nigeria now spends 96% of its revenue servicing debt. With the debt to revenue ratio rising from 83.2% in 2021 to 96.3% by 2022. Some will argue that the debt to GDP ratio at 34% is still low compared to other countries in Africa. And that is absolutely correct. But no one pays their debt using GDP. Debt is paid using revenue, and Nigeria's revenues have been declining. Nigeria earns revenue today to service debt and not to grow. The place to start, therefore, is to remove the inefficient fuel subsidies. Nigerian fuel subsidies benefit the rich, not the poor. Fueling theirs and government's endless fleet of cars at the expense of the poor. Estimates show that the poorest 40% of the population consume just 3% of petrol. Fuel subsidies are killing the Nigerian economy, costing the economy of Nigeria $10 billion alone in 2022. Now that means that Nigeria is borrowing what it doesn't have to borrow for. If it simply eliminates these inefficient subsidies and uses the resources well for national development. Rather, support should be provided to private sector refineries and modular refineries to allow for efficiency and competitiveness to drive down fuel pump prices. The newly commissioned Dangote refinery, by Your Excellency, Mr. President, the largest single trained petroleum refinery in the world, as well as the petrochemical complex, will revolutionize Nigeria's economy. And congratulations to you, Mr. President. I'd also like to give congratulations to my dear brother, Aliko Dangote, for his amazing $19 billion investment. You got Nigerians, Mr. President, who believe in Nigeria. He's one of them. I am one of them. And we are many of us. We believe in Nigeria. Your Excellencies, there's also an urgent need to look at the cost of governance. The cost of governance in Nigeria is way too high and should be drastically reduced to free up more resources for development. Nigeria is spending very little on development. Today, 
Nigeria is ranked among the countries with the lowest human capital development index in the world, with a rank of 167 among 174 countries globally, according to the World Bank 2022 Public Expenditure Review Report. To meet Nigeria's massive infrastructure needs, according to this report, we require $3 trillion by 2050. According to the report, at the current rate, it will take 300 years to provide the minimum level of infrastructure needed for Nigeria's development. All living Nigerians today and many generations to come will be long gone by then. We must therefore change this and change it decisively. Nigeria must rely more on the private sector for infrastructure development to reduce the fiscal burdens on the shoulders of government. Your Excellencies, much can be done to raise tax revenue, as tax to GDP ratio in Nigeria is still low. This must include improving tax collection, tax administration, but moving from tax exemption to tax redemption, ensuring that multinational companies pay appropriate royalties and taxes and that leakages in tax collection are closed. However, simply raising taxes is not enough. As many question the value of paying taxes, hence a high level of tax avoidance. Many citizens provide their own electricity, sink their own boreholes to get access to water, repair their roads in their neighborhoods and in their towns. These are essentially high implicit taxes. Nigerians, therefore, today pay the highest implicit taxes in the world. Governments need to ensure effective social contracts by delivering quality public services. It is not the amount collected, it is how it is spent and what it's delivered. Nations that grow better, they run effective governments that assure social contracts with their citizens. Your Excellencies, we must rebalance the structure and performance of the economy. A very common refrain in Nigeria with every successful, successive government is, we need to diversify the economy. But is it really so? The economy of Nigeria is one of the most diversified in Africa, with the oil sector accounting for only 15% of the GDP, and 85% is accounted for by other sectors. Nigeria's challenge is not diversification. Nigeria's challenge is revenue concentration. And that is because the oil sector accounts for 75.4% of export revenue and 50% of all government revenue. The solution, therefore, is to unlock the bottlenecks that are hampering the 85% of the economy. These include low productivity, very poor infrastructure and logistics, despite gains being made epileptic power supply, inadequate access to finance for small and medium-sized enterprises. Nigeria must also shift away from just relying on import substitution to export-focused industrialization. No team in soccer can ever win by playing defense. Every team that wins in soccer, they win by playing offense. When you do export-led industrialization, that's offense. That's how economics will grow, and that's how we will thrive. Your Excellencies, for faster growth, Nigeria must fix decisively the issue of power once and for all. There is no justification for Nigeria not having enough power. The abnormal have simply become normal. Nigeria's private sector is hampered by the high cost of power. Providing electricity will make Nigerian industries more competitive, especially within the context of the African continental free trade area. And it's actually not brain surgery. Let me give two examples, Kenya and Egypt. With the support of the African Development Bank, working with President Kenyatta, he was able to expand electricity access in Kenya from 32% in 2013 to 75% in 2022. What an incredible achievement in just a period of 10 years. Today, 86% of Kenya's economy 
is powered by renewable energy. And one project where I came to visit with the president is called the Last Mile Connectivity Project. The bank support, it allowed Kenya to connect the poorer households, 2.3 million of them, to electricity. And that's 12 million people provided with affordable connection to grid power. Thank you, Mr. President. It was a fantastic program. I'm just coming from Egypt. In 2014, Egypt had electricity deficit of 6,000 megawatts. But by 2022, Egypt had 20,000 megawatts of surplus power generation. Amazing. So it can be done. I'd like to commend the federal government on the leadership of the president for the tireless efforts being made in this area with recent commissioning of several power projects across the country and with so much private sector, but still much needs to be done. Nigeria should invest massively in renewable energy, especially solar. God loves Nigeria. We got solar, we got sun all the time in Nigeria. And that's why the African Development Bank is implementing $25 billion in what we call Desert to Power Program to provide electricity for 250 million people all across 11 countries, including all the Sahel and including all of Northern Nigeria. Your Excellencies, for inclusive development, which my dear sister, Amina Mohammed, just spoke about, Nigeria must completely revive its rural areas. Nigeria's rural areas are forgotten and have become zones of economic misery. To revive and transform these rural economies, we must make agriculture their main source of income, a business, and a wealth-creating sector. To be clear, agriculture is not a development activity. It is not a development sector. Agriculture is a business. The development of special agro-industrial processing zones will transform agriculture in Nigeria, add value for agricultural value chains, and attract private sector food and agricultural businesses into these rural areas. Special agro-industrial processing zones will help to turn the rural areas into new zones of economic prosperity and create millions of jobs. The African Development Bank, with your support, Mr. President, Islamic Development Bank, and the International Fund for Agricultural Development are currently supporting Nigeria to implement a $518 million special agro-industrial processing zone program in seven states of the country. And we've received, and the FCT, already we have requests from 19 states to have that done. We are ready, Mr. President, and incoming, Mr. Vice President, and incoming President, we are fully ready to help you to expand this into every single state in Nigeria. And we are equally ready to help to revamp agricultural lending institutions to help modernize food and agriculture sector. Your Excellencies, the best asset of Nigeria is not its natural resources. Nigeria's best asset is its human capital. We must therefore invest heavily in human capital to build up Nigeria's skills, skills that we need to be globally competitive in a rapidly digitized global economy. We must build world-class educational institutions, accelerate skills development in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, as well as in ICT, computer coding, which are not the jobs of the past, but the jobs of the future. Your Excellencies, there is an urgent need to unleash the potential of the youth. Today, over 75% of the population of Nigeria is under the age of 35. This presents a demographic advantage, but it must be turned into an economic advantage. Nigeria must create youth-based wealth. We must, move from, we must move from the so-called youth empowerment programs. The youth do not need handouts. They need investments. The current banking system does not, will not lend to the youth. If you're a young person, you go to a bank, they ask you, how old are you? You say 21 years old. They ask you, go bring your tax receipts for the last 25 years. How does that work? Special funds, while palliative in approach, are also not systemic and are also not sustainable. What is needed to unleash the entrepreneurship of the youth of Nigeria are brand new financial ecosystems that understands 
values, promotes, and provides financial instruments and platforms for nurturing business ventures of the youth in Nigeria at scale. The African Development Bank and partners, including the Adjuncts Francais de Development, Islamic Development Bank, and others, we launched right here in Nigeria the $618 million IDAIS program to develop digital and creative enterprises. Mr. President, under your leadership, this is one of the great things I hope that you're most proud of. These things will create 6 million jobs and add $6.3 billion to Nigeria's economy. Your Excellencies, as I close, the African Development Bank is currently working with central banks and countries all across Africa to design and to support the establishment of youth entrepreneurship investment banks. These will be new financial institutions run by young, professional, highly competent experts and bankers to develop and deploy new financial products and services for businesses and ventures of young people. Several African countries have already agreed to set up the youth entrepreneurship investment banks. Nigeria should establish the youth entrepreneurship investment bank. Your Excellency, Mr. President, thank you very much. Your Excellency, Mr. Vice uh, uh, President-elect, let me now close. Nigeria, Nigeria's economy needs to soar. You have an incredible opportunity to make history. History by building a resurgent Nigeria, a united and prosperous Nigeria. It is Nigeria's turn. I wish you all the very best for success. May God bless you, may God help you, and may God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Dr. Akimumi Adishino, President, African Development Bank, speaking on strengthening the Nigerian economy. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, a lot has been spoken about youth inclusiveness and perspective of the youth in this inauguration lecture now comes with the next contributor